Hi everyone, it's Renee from Lovely Lavender Wishes. I pray that you are having a blessed day today. And today I am going to do a short tutorial on how to make this little lovely um, envelope booklet um, that a lot of people have been asking me to do a tutorial on. Um, also at the end of the video, I will take you through what I have finished so far in my corset journal. Um, the one with the corset cover that I showed um, in a previous video and I said that I would take you along on my journey and show you a little bit of the things that I've been doing. This is one of them and a lot of people ask for a tutorial on this. So um, first I would like to say, of course there's nothing new under the, under the sun and so I'm sure there's a tutorial out on this already. Um, where I saw this was an example in 49 Dragonflies. On um, one of her videos she did a flip through of one of her journals and inside was a little booklet like this and I just loved it and I tried to find a tutorial from her and I didn't see one. Um, for all I know there could be one and I just missed it. Um, so I just kind of took the idea and did it on my own. Um, so this is this tutorial is how I did it. Um, I'm sure people have done this before and maybe has another way of doing this, but I will show you what I did. But first of all, here is what it is. It's made out of three envelopes. Um, and it's just a little booklet that opens up, folds out this way and this way. And so you have um, a journaling space down here where I um, put a little napkin on here, decoupage a little napkin on it. And then there are three pockets um, in this. And each pocket has, pull this out, each pocket has a journaling card that I just kept a blank on the back so you can journal or add pictures. And I um, put a little eyelet with um, some thread or yeah, some string on the top to make it easier to get in and out. Um, and then here's the back. Okay, so today I'll take you through a quick tutorial on how you can make one of these yourself and form it um, to your ideas and your style. Um, they're super easy to make, they're super fun. You can crank out a lot of these. Um, so let me grab my chair and sit down and hopefully I will stay in screen for all y'all. Okay, so what you're going to need is three envelopes, um, some scrap paper, whatever you want to cover your booklet with, and then um, uh, probably one brad, unless you want to add more, and then whatever you want to decorate your booklet with. And then some string or twine or ribbon or what have you. Okay, so let's start with the setup on how to Put this whole thing together so essentially what you're gonna do is get three envelopes now I'm not gonna give sizes because um, everybody uses different envelopes you might use a card envelope you might use the longer envelopes you might use junk mail envelopes these were just typical um, you know little mailing envelopes that I had um, so all you're gonna do is just measure your paper to whatever size envelope you have but so the first thing you're gonna do is glue these envelopes together. Now I'm just using a cheap old glue stick, Scotch permanent glue stick. I mean, they work great, but I will be sewing this as well. So I'll have a double, um, it, I guess adhesive or double, you know, holding on this when I sew it. But so you just wanna glue the first envelope to the second envelope. So now here's your two openings right here. Here's your two openings. And then your next envelope, depending on how long your flap is, um, where did my scissors go? Let's see. I just kind of cut this off a little bit, throw it away. Oh y'all, and don't mind my nails, they're atrocious and I'm gonna have to get them redone um, sometime this week. But because of all the crafting I have been doing, this is what happens, oh my nail polish comes off. Okay, so this one you're gonna want this way. Um, when you glue because this is going to be your journaling area. So you're just going to glue this onto here. And y'all, I don't measure. I just kind of stick things together. I, it's all trial and error for me. <laughs> so, and then this, let's see. Let me make, get this so it's even. So 
this is how it's going to fold up. It's gonna fold up this way, fold in, this is gonna fold down, and then there's your booklet, okay? So that is just the main base of the whole thing. Now what I found out when I did this, when you flip this open, your opening is down here, not up here. And I try to figure out a way to um, do this in you know the simplest way. I tried flipping the envelope, doing a whole bunch of things. Um, there's probably a way, but all I do with this now is you're gonna cut the top, just a little sliver off the top, because that's gonna be your opening. And then I just cut this whole thing off and kept a couple of the sides, kept about, you know, maybe a millimeter, half an inch along the sides so I have something to glue my paper on, toss that, okay? So I'm gonna make my opening up here, but here I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna glue my paper to, the, these little edges right here and the bottom, and then I'm gonna sew that eventually so it'll have a stronger grip. Okay, so there is your, your base. Next thing you wanna do is figure out what kind of paper you want to put on your book. And as you can see here, I use just the same paper. I coffee dyed, I just splattered some coffee on some music paper that I had from an old book, old music book I had. Um, and I just use the same paper for all my, all my, um, sections here. Now this one, I'm going to be doing a bohemian um, style journal next after my corset journal. I keep getting all these my images in my head of what I want to do for the next journal. And I'm like, I got to finish the journal I'm on first. <laughs> but um, so my next one is going to be bohemian style. So this time I decided I am going to do these kind of colors um, for this for this one. And I'm going to switch up. I'm not going to do all the same paper. So essentially just find any kind of scrap paper, scrapbook game paper. You can collage these, you can do whatever you want. And the first thing you're gonna do, all I did was take my paper and just put the envelope on here, traced it, you know, traced the size and did a ruler and did a line across, cut it out, and there's my first piece. And then same with these, I would just put the envelope on trace you know draw draw the lines cut them out and then there's my second piece so if you want it a little bit smaller than your envelopes you can do that as well and have like the layered look i like that look too um, these i put right up to flush with the edge but you can have it come in a little bit more and have your envelope peeking through and talking about the envelopes the first thing you're probably going to want to do is ink up your envelopes um, just in case there are little, you know, sides or, you know, the, the edges poking out. You don't want to have stark white, unless you do, unless that's the, what you're, you know, going for. Um, so I would just ink all this up. And I keep inking as I went along, too, because um, things would shift and maybe some other things would be showing as I was doing this. So... So just inky, 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 you know, with junk journaling, you're always inking. <laughs> Again, if you like that style, if you don't, then don't ink or ink with a different color. I was debating whether to do like a pinkish color or a purplish color to kind of go with this. Um, but then I just kind of stuck with the, this is, what am I using? The brushed corduroy distress ink using that. Um, seems to go with everything. And there's some browns in this paper and so. It all kind of goes. And again, like I said, I'm doing this quickly. I will go back and ink as I go to see what else shows. So, so ink up your, your envelopes first. And then, then your next thing you're going to do is cut out your pieces. And I already pre-cut a lot of these because it, you know, you'd be bored watching me cut all these things up so I pre-cut them. So the first thing you're gonna do then is just start gluing. You're gonna start assembling your um, your booklet. 
So pick which kind of papers you want, what kind of decoration you want, glue it on. So let's make sure I'm doing this correctly. That's the top that I want, yes. And then you want a cover page here. This is like your opening page. So you wanna put whatever you want here. See, and all I did with these was just measure and cut. Glue, glue, glue. You're all gonna laugh how I do this. I literally just throw things together, but somehow they kind of turn out in the end. <laughs> but I did make a lot of mistakes as I was doing some of my um, stuff for my journal. Um, I'll show you a page I was doing that took me a couple days to do because for some reason it just was not working out for me. Um, okay, so this page is going to be one of these. So now you have to figure out um, how you want your opening to be. So for instance, this page, because it's for my corset journal, I kind of did the corset type look, I guess. Um, so an easy way to do this, which I'll show you, is find the paper, you know, cut out your paper that you're gonna size on here. And then you're gonna just not put a crease in it, but just bend it a little. If you want this kind of style, you're gonna cut from here down. That way when you open it, both sides are going to be equal. So this time I used my, what is this, Fiskars scallop scissors. And I wanted a little scallopy type look, um, like the bohemian, I don't know, to kind of go with the theme. So I went from corner, and I went on a little curve, kind of made it like a little U shape all the way down. And then you open up and there's your opening. So you gotta do that three times, because you have three openings, so. Just do that, it's very easy. And then there's your openings. Okay. And then again, you're gonna wanna, if you're inking, ink before you glue it, it makes it a little bit easier. I hope I'm all in view for y'all. Let me check while I'm doing this. Yeah, it looks like I'm in view. Okay. I don't have a big old fancy camera set up, y'all. I have my phone hanging from my light in my craft room with a little arm, and I just press video record on my phone. Um, I don't edit or do anything with my videos, as y'all could see. It's just kind of go as we go. Um, but um, hey, you know, it works a little bit. <laughs> At least you guys can see what I'm doing. And then another thing I will ink is the inside because when this is here, you don't want the stark white showing, or at least I don't. So a lot of times I'll just kind of go in and ink this part too. And this will be covered so you don't even have to worry. You know, just kind of ink it up however way you want it. Um, Let me get this down so this will protect my table. Let's see here. Oh, y'all, bear with me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> That's the part that'll probably be showing through. It's a little dark, but. Or you can even um, ink these um, envelopes up like, let's see, like something like this ahead of time. If you wanted to just um, take some of your Distress ink, put it on, um, you know, your plastic board or some wax paper or something, spray it with water and then dip your envelopes in and you get this cool effect and you can, you know, let it run and um, just... Um, kind of morph into each other. So this would be a cool look too, if you can see that, on your envelopes. Um, so then you don't even have to do it this way. But 
the the only thing with this is a lot of this will get covered you'll see the inside you can do the inside um, but a lot of this would be covered if you're gonna cover it with paper or you don't even have to cover it with paper if you just wanted to kind of glue them all and then kind of maybe do some collage or some napkin collage on this or some stamping or whatever and just keep the envelopes like this and don't cover it with paper that's another um, idea of what you can do with these so these are some of the envelopes that I've worked on for my journal that I'll be working that I'll be doing okay so then the next thing you want to do is start gluing these down now you want to keep this one open and I'm going to show you why in just a sec so you're going to start gluing all these other um, pieces of paper down And I noticed that because I did this for the first time, I have this showing. So I'm probably going to take this a little bit and cut that off. I'm going to cut this side off too. Because I don't want that showing. But if you like it showing, keep it showing. And like I said, um, you'll be sewing this if you want to sew it, so you don't have to worry about it, you know, coming off once you sew it all on. Okay. What am I doing next? Okay, let's finish these. Remember, don't get glue on this part. You want that part open. Okay, and now I'm noticing here, this is going a little bit below the crease. Now, what's going to happen is when you start bending this up, it's gonna get caught in there. So I'm gonna cut a little strip of this off because you want it to be a little less than the creases. You don't want, let me just rank it. You don't want um, it jamming all up in that crease there. And same situation on this side. I shouldn't have that problem on the third one because I cut it all out. Now this one, you're gonna do the same thing. Let me cut these real quick. I don't want those showing. But now you are just going to glue along the sides and along the bottom, because you don't want to seal this part up. And when you sew it down the sides, it'll give it that extra um, security and strength to hold. your pocket here's your pocket and here's your pocket now I want to make sure that it all folds up nice and flat and nothing is jamming into each other and again then I'll go around and ink some more and I'll kind of clear clean up if there's anything hanging over the edges Okay, now see these are, you can see they're starting to jam into the corners there. So I'm just gonna cut those off. So they don't get stuck in that corner. And it looks like these do too. there. Okay. 
just put a little bit more glue here just so it'll hold for now. Okay. Okay, let's see. So we got our pockets done. And now you want your journaling. This is gonna be like a journal area like this. If you want it like that. If you want another pocket here, you can put another pocket there and you can have four pockets. It's up to you how you wanna do this. I just wanted like a little journaling area or a little blank, blank area. So I'm gonna have this same background for this one. And I'm gonna put something on top of it, like a journaling card or something, some kind of decoration, some ephemera or something. This part's really white here. Okay. And then the last is the back. So here's your front, and then this is the back piece right here. And for that one, I wanted to do this, this again to match this. So I'm gonna put this on there. Okay, and this looks like it's a little, I'm gonna make sure it's not gonna get jammed in the, and crease right there. Okay, there's a little bit hanging off here on the side. Apparently I didn't cut it too well, so I'm just gonna snip that off. Make sure there's nothing else hanging off the sides. You could even put lace on these. You can sew lace down the sides if you'd like. Let me grab my Okay. So yeah, you can decorate with whatever. You can put lace. The only thing is if you start embellishing like the insides up a lot and put a lot in, instead of laying flat as an envelope, it's gonna get really puffy and then you're gonna have issues um, in your um, creases here. Um, now for this one, you could put lace along the bottom and I might add some lace along here to kind of cover this part up, maybe some hanging lace because when it opens, it's not gonna affect anything. It'll just be hanging here. So um, I might do that. Put some like bohemian style lace along there. But anyways, okay, so the next thing, the reason why you're not gonna do this one yet is because you want to get this on um, with the brad underneath this piece of paper, unless you want the brad, you know, sticking through. Um, but um, I like to kind of hide the back backing of the brat. So the next thing you're gonna do is punch out a circle, a couple circles. Um, Y'all are gonna laugh. I don't even have, I have, let me see, where's my punch? I have this big punch, um, but it, the circle's too big. And I don't even have a little circle punch. I need to get myself one. Um, but I, always, I have this, which is just this um, template, circle template with all these different circles. And so I do it the old fashioned way and I pick a size circle that I want. Um, I put it on my piece of paper, you know, draw it and cut it out by hand, y'all. Um, so what you're going to want is to cut out a chipboard circle and then whatever material or paper that you want. I wanted a little contrasting, um, so I did a darker circle here with this um, black bohemian type, type paper I had. Um, and so you're going to glue your image to your chipboard. So it's at least a little raised, so you have enough room to put the string under, okay? So cut out a circle, punch out a circle, whatever tools you have. If you're like me, do it the old fashioned way and just cut it out, find a circle in your house, trace it, cut it out, and then put your material on it or your paper over it. And then kind of ink up the sides if you want. 
It'd be nice to have a little circle punch. It'd be a lot easier than having to cut them out by hand and probably a lot even, a lot more even, but hey, you know, this works for me. So been doing it for years. So you're gonna figure out where you wanna put it and then find either, I have an X-Acto knife or find um, one of those big punchy things I called the awls or the pokey things that everyone calls them and figure out where you want your button to be on the top. Punch a hole through. Kind of do like a little slit even. And then find a brad. I'm gonna do this little pink brad. If you can see it, a little pink brad. And you can do large brads, small brads, whatever you have. Put it through. And then, so there's your little button for the clasp. Okay, so now you can put this piece of paper on to cover this, okay? Y'all should see my uh, scrap, my craft room, call it my scrapbook room, my craft room. It literally looks like a tornado came through here. Everything's open, everything's on the floor, everything's in piles. Um, working on this journal, between the journal, my Bible journaling, and my scrapbooking. Um, Y'all, I've got piles all over the place, and ribbon, and fabric, and lace, you know, all over the place. <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, for each project that I'm working on. Okay, so then once I'm done gluing it all in like this, I'll go back and kind of just, you know, do a little bit more of the inking to make sure I'm getting all the areas. Now here I have some hangover, so I am just going to trim that off. Or you can ink it up either way. I just try to keep it all as uniform as possible because it keeps the strength of the, the flap. Okay, you all wanted this tutorial, so I hope I'm not boring you. <laughs> okay, so, okay, here is our booklet so far. Okay, let me get this. It's a little too white for me. Is that hanging over? No, it's just the envelope, okay. Okay. So here's your booklet. The next thing you are going to want to do is sew. Now, I'm not gonna um, show, you know, have you guys watch me sew this thing. Um, I'll do this off camera at, at a later time. But let's get some ink over there. But okay, so um, let me show you how you're going to sew this. Okay, so when you go, let me see if I can show you okay you're gonna sew across the top like this okay if you want if you want to sew these um, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this now be careful when you're sewing remember you don't want to sew the opening of your envelopes up your pockets up so you're just gonna sew down this side the bottom and up and on the back as you can see I don't have anything there so just right here okay and then same with this one, you're gonna sew down the side, back up. Okay, now with this one, you're gonna flip it over and make sure you only sew, again, just the three sides and not your opening. Um, Cause you know, if, if you're not paying attention, you just start sewing across the whole thing, you just sewed shut your opening. Um, unless you want to, um, one thing you can do 
is and before you put all the paper on here if you want to do the backings first and sew across the whole thing then come on this side and glue this down and then re-sew this part you'll have um a strip of you know you'll have some thread going across here which would kind of be cool and give it some more texture behind here but you would have to sew this part first then come and then sew this so you don't sew your pocket shut but if you have enough space at the top actually if you're going really close to the top you really don't sew the pocket up that much you'll just sew these little edges down and then you'll still have this part so I mean either way it just depends how you're doing it see for this this one if I would have sewed across on the back all of this would have been sewed and the only opening I had would have been this little part so it just depends on what kind of opening you have at the top this one's a little different so just kind of be aware of that as you're sewing okay um, so that would be your next step is you go and sew and then your final step really is decorating it and filling it so like I said, you, you want to be careful as to how much decoration you're going to be putting on the inside. You don't want to get it too bulky, unless that's what you're going for. But if you want like the flat type envelope that you can tuck in a pocket or a um, little tuck spot, um, you want to kind of keep this a little flat. So what I did to decorate, and I'm not going to um, demonstrate this because I'm not really quite sure what I want to put on this yet. I have to kind of think on that. Um, it's going to all depend on the what I'm bringing into my Bohemian journal. But for this, I decoupage just napkins. Now, if you have never done napkins, um, I suggest just going on YouTube and um, going on some tutorials on how to use napkins in junk journaling or even Bible journaling. It's the same process. Essentially, you put some glue down or some Mod Podge or let's see, I use the clear gesso. Um, I put just like a little layer down and then I put my napkin down. You can either cut the napkin out or tear it however you want. And then you put it down on um, the gesso, the Maj Podge or whatever you have. And then with a brush, um, very carefully, you just brush some more on top. Um, some people don't put any on the bottom. They just put the napkin down and then just do the top part, which is fine. I like doing both because um, it kind of holds my napkin down. I like to have the little wet surface on the bottom, so I put my napkin down and then I just sew the top. And if you can see, if your napkin is you, um, kind of translucent, you can see your paper through it. And if, depending on if you have a darker picture on your napkin or lighter, you know, the lighter parts, the your background will show through it, which is pretty cool. I like that. It's kind of like a stamp image. Okay, so I did that and then. Um, on the front, I just, I had, um, I think this tag is from Artie Maze, I think, um, in a freebie maybe she sent out, um, and just I have a whole page of these little, um, little titles, and I just um, tore some paper, or actually this one, I just, I used my, my uh, paper edgers, Fisker paper edgers, the deco one, and just put on some scrapbook paper, and then on the inside, you can decide what you want to put on this page. This might be like just a journaling page. You might want to put pictures here. You might want to collage this page. Or like I said, if you wanted to have a pocket on this page, you could have another pocket here. You can have a double pocket, um, whatever you'd like to do. This one, I just wanted to have like a, like a little journaling card. And again, I um, added the napkin here. Okay, and then to fill these. Okay, so let's do the string for this. So I have this string. You can do string, um, ribbon. So I have this string, which has got some, I don't know if you can see, it's got some gold um, throughout it, like a gold thread throughout it. And I thought that would look cool with the bohemian kind of look. So you want to first kind of work your thread under your button. And all I did was tie it underneath really tight and then tie it into a knot and depending on how thick or thin your string is it's gonna raise up this button a little bit which is kind of what you want um, so I just did a really good knot and throw that little piece out and then this is what's going to tie your booklet together so you, you probably depending on how how many times you want to go around um, 
So how many times I went? One, two, three. And then I had enough to kind of tie around and then I'll cut that off. So um, there's your tie. You can do it with ribbon, you can do it with some string, with some baker's twine, whatever you have. This one I did with, I guess it's called baker's twine or just some kind of um, twine. Um, this one I did with this little string. Okay, and then your final, um, final fun thing is to decorate the inside, to put, figure out what you're gonna put in the pockets. And these, all I did was cut out some journal cards and then I backed them with um, a little bit heavier duty uh, um, scrapbook paper, just, just plain scrapbook paper because I wanted to be able to write on these or post pictures or whatever. And then I just added an eyelet with some of this twine, same twine that I used to wrap my journal with. I just liked to have a, like a little bit of look. You don't even have to put anything. You can just put a journal card in here if you want, but I liked the eyelet and I liked having this so I can, you can literally pull, it makes it a little bit easier to pull them out. I tried ribbon, I tried tying this into a bow and then I came up with that same issue that I told you about. If I had a bow here, a bow here and a bow here, when you close all these, it got kind of clunky and bulky and the knots of the bow were, were um, messing with my the look of the whole thing so I um, undid the bows and I just kind of left it like this if you do ribbon you can maybe do ribbon you could do um, fabric like a fabric swatch piece um, or even like a little tab or something but just be aware if you're gonna do that that these things all are going to close and so you want to make sure that they are shorter than where your envelopes going to close because they'll get jammed up in the crease so that's just something to kind of be aware of so there you have it y'all um, hope you enjoyed it's super easy to do um, I hope you all have fun making one um, I would love to see what y'all do and what y'all come up with but here is my original and here is my bohemian one like I said I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna decorate I'm gonna probably put some ribbon or some hanging tassels from here and figure out how I'm gonna do the inside but here it is Kind of exciting i'm already getting my other journal ready i gotta finish this journal y'all <laughs> and then i'm gonna figure out what i'm gonna put on the inside of these as well and decorate so that was fun so let me show you really quick what i have been up to in my corset journal um, i have my signatures together and like i said i'll probably be adding or subtracting some things depending on how thick this thing gets it's already getting chunky and i haven't even hardly done anything in it um, and I haven't added anything in it really, so we'll have to see what happens, but I keep adding more. So we'll see how much my journal can hold. But like I told you at the, in my journal, the cover um, video is I don't sew these in until the end because I'm constantly taking them out and you know playing with them and sewing and different things. So this is probably gonna be my first page. Um, this is a tuck spot up here. And I gotta figure, I still have to add everything into them. Right now I'm just doing the base pages. You know, I have a pocket here, um, a pocket here, and a tuck spot here. I still have to do something and decorate that. And then I did this fun thing with these papers um, with some ink and some coffee dyeing and just some splattering up here. And then I sewed them. So this is going to be a big old big pocket here. And then um, I have some gorgeous thick, this is some thick vellum that I've gotten and I've had for years. I love it. Um, I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. And then I just did this. Um, here's a pocket here, a pocket here, and then this flips out with a tuck spot here. So I still have to add all that. Um, let's see. Um, here's the centerpiece of this one, the signature. So I've got a couple... Um, Here's that corset kind of look again. I'm trying to keep the theme throughout, but I keep adding different things. So who knows? It'll be, you know, corset on the outside, just whatever on the inside, perhaps. <laughs> um, a journal page. Uh, let's see. And then I have another one of those big pockets on this side, a pocket here. So that's the first signature. And then let's see, what else did I do? Okay, so here's some of the papers. 
This was um, a tutorial by Pam from the Paper Outpost on how to make, this was made out of an envelope as well. Go to her um, site, the Paper Outpost, and check. She's got one on how to make um, pockets out of envelopes. And then I just used, uh, what were these? These were the liquid pearls. And she mentions these a lot, and I finally got a set. And after doing this, now I'm hooked. I'm having fun. I'm probably going to be liquid pearling things up all over the place. Who knows? Um, same technique I used with these envelopes. Um, I did on the tag. Um, and then just added a little bit of embellishment, some cheesecloth, some fabric, and a little flower here. I like having little tags. And I'm going to do a lot more fabric and different things hanging off the side. Um, here I just um, decoupaged uh, a napkin and I tore it on purpose. I wanted it to look kind of match the paper, so I kind of tore in the middle, tore the napkin on purpose. Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay, here's another uh, uh, flip out uh, pocket and then this flips out and then into another tuck spot here. Now this one, y'all, remember I told you, this one is the one that took me a while. <laughs> um, I was trying to figure out how to do this in the most efficient way possible, and it wasn't very efficient for me, but it worked. Um, so here's the back. It's a big pocket. You can see it's a big pocket. with. Um, I have two layers of material and lace and more lace and then a lace trim that I coffee dyed. And then I collaged this and sewed it. Um, if you can see that, sewed it around, and then we have some fabric here, some cheesecloth and lace. So, and then I did it on the same, the other side as well. So you have another big pocket on this side, big pocket. Um, here's the collage side, and then the lace side. This is really fun to do too. There's a lot of trial and error on that one. And then I think that's it so far for and then some more um, napkin uh, decoupage. So for that, and then let's see what I got done in this one. Another one of those big pockets here with some paper that, again, I had so much fun playing around with this paper. Um, here's one of those envelopes um, that I inked up and it's gonna flip open and you're gonna have an opening up here and then a little tuck spot here. Okay, let's see what else. And this is just a big, um, this is gorgeous paper with um, some velvet, raised velvet, I don't know if you can see that, raised velvet on it, um, it's just some flowers. So it's gonna be a big tuck spot there with some ribbon on the side. Some more of that vellum. So slowly but surely, I'm getting a few things done here and there, and eventually I'll fill it up. So here's another one of those big tuck spots. And then this was another, I forgot who I saw this from. Oh, shoot, I'll have to see if I can look it up. But this was another little uh, image I saw on somebody's, somebody's website, this, and it's a like a little pocket here, and it wraps around to the next page again with another pocket and this was all um uh what is it like sewing type paper so these were this was a collage these were actual um what are those uh patterns super old patterns i've gotten these from the 1950s 40s 50s something like that um some 60s and then i have some even older ones um, so I just grabbed the patterns, tore them up, and collaged them. So those are vintage. And then these are um, little snaps that I snapped in with um, some cute little buttons and some lace. So that. Here's the other side of that. That little envelope. And then another, another big pocket. And I think that's it so far. So that's where I am at. And then I made this to go in here somewhere. Somewhere. We will figure it out. And then I made, let's see, a bunch of these envelopes um, and some papers. Again, with that dyeing technique of you know spraying water onto your ink and dipping your envelope in. If you all haven't done this, this is really fun. 
And then a couple of these have this in it. This is Glitter Mist Copper. I'm almost out. I'm gonna have to get some more by Art Company. I mean, this is sold. Even all the tags are coming off it. But it's um, a copper glitter mist. And when it hits the paper, let's see if I can, I can see this one. If you can see the metallic glitter mist on that. And this is a water-based ink as well. So you can spray water on it and it'll run. And you can like run it across your paper. So that's really fun. And then I've got some doilies and a few other things that I've glitter or that I've um, coffee stained and what have you. And then I was doing this experiment. Um, I don't know um, if I'm too happy with it or not. I'm debating. But this is wax paper. And um, it's going to be a hinge. And these were just some colors that I was playing around with. But I'm going to do some lighter colors to maybe to go in this. Um, but this is alcohol ink on wax paper than with the copper sprayed on top. If you can see how the copper got on it a little bit. Um, I'm debating, I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do these, but it's got a little hinge so you can like, you know, hinge it and it'll flip back and forth or whatever. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna work with this, if I'm gonna put them, some of these in or use some of them some in here. But, and then I've also got all the fabric that I have been, um, that I, Got from that thrift store, y'all. If you watch that video, um, I cut up all the clothes that I had and got a ton. I've got like two boxes of fabric for all for under eight dollars um, because it was fifty cents a day at my thrift store. So if you haven't seen that video, go watch it. I'll show you how to do this. But I've got some great fabric that I am going to add um, with lace and a whole bunch of other things. And actually, this fabric from one of the shirts this lace this pink lace is what I used on this so this was from one of the shirts that I got this lace here and then this fabric in the back um, it's kind of like a tan fabric I got that from a shirt as well and then this, this was from that lace shirt all this lace that I got was from that lace shirt um, shirt full of lace that I cut up and here's some more trimming from that. So um, those 50 cent clothes are definitely coming in handy and I am using them throughout my journal. So anyways, y'all, thank y'all for joining me. I hope this inspired you to maybe make one of these on, you know, for yourself. And I would love to see um, you, you know, whatever you make, please post it. You know, I'm on a lot of the Facebook pages. Um, that's where a lot of you have heard of me in the first place. So um, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm new to this whole thing. So I just, if people ask me for a tutorial, I'll try to do one. Um, like I said, there's nothing new under the sun. There's probably tutorials out on all of this, but I'm just showing you how I did it. And then you can take it and, you know, run with it and, you know, do it on your own. So anyways, thank you all for joining me. I hope you all have a very blessed day and I guess I will see you next time. Bye-bye.